Hello, in this video we're going to try to derive the mode of a binomial distribution. So here's the uh, distribution function of a binomial can, and the combinations it can be written like this and x goes from 0 to n and if we were to plot it you know it goes up and then at some point it comes back down and so wherever it's highest is called the mode of the distribution. Um, sometimes you know it equals so there's two modes sometimes there's one and we'll we'll figure out what all that means um, here if we look at the probability of zero you know and then plug in zero here for some n to this um, we get we get this distribution and that should be factorial um, now if we look at the probability of one which is this now to get from here to here we multiply th this equation by this number and we get that so the one here and and min and then minus one of that is is here so if this number is more than one then we we go up and and we can see that too so the probability of two to get from here to here we multiply th this equation by this number and we get this so if this number is more than one we go up if it equals one we go straight across if it if it's less than one we go down and we just keep going so generically if we're at x minus one here is the PDF and then if we multiply this PDF by this number we get this so if this number is more than one we go this is goes up if it equals one we stay the same if it's less than one it goes down and so this is generic this is what we have to, to find so th this is the number that we're looking for. You know, when is this greater than one? Okay. So now let's put a little more math to it. Is if if this ratio is more than one, then it goes up. It increases. And so I notice there's no equal sign here. So we want to know where where does it you know stop. So here's the two distribution functions, and then it can be simplified to this. And actually, this is the number that we saw on that the page before it. If this number is greater than one, then it, it increased. Okay, so let's find out when that happens. So multiply this over, and, and we get this. So this quantity has to be greater than you know this quantity. And then the if you multiply the x in and take this x and the p, those cancel, leaving this. So this is the condition. If x is strictly less than n plus p, n plus one times p, then then we're going to keep going up. And so there's two cases. If n plus one times p is an integer, or not an integer. And so these, these brackets here, it looks like an L and a backwards L. That means take the lowest possible integer, you know, of this. You know, get rid of the fractional part. So if, if the, uh, and it's, it's called a floor function. So if you take the floor, you know, to get the integer, and if that's less than this number, meaning this is not an integer, it's a fractional, you know, like 10.1, and then you take the floor of it, you get 10. That's this first case, so it's not an integer. Um, then f of x increases for all x less than that. And then once it becomes greater than this, then it, then it decreases. So the mode is actually at the end of the floor of this number so since x can only take on integer values and it, let's say if this is 10.3 
it increases up to 10.3 and then it goes down. But that means it increases to 10 and then 11, it goes past that and then it goes back down. And that's what this means. It's the floor of n plus one times p. Okay, so and then that that's it. That's the mode, the floor of this number. Now, if this is an integer, meaning the floor of it is equal to the number itself, it's an integer. Now that this is the second case to consider. So it strictly increases for x is less than this number, which means the mode is at, and since this is an integer and we have to be strictly less than that, then the mode is at one minus this number. But if this is an integer, it can be shown that it actually is equal. Those two become equal, so it's a bimodal distribution. Um, so if you take this number and put it back in these equations, you can show that this these two have to equal, which means that this equals 1. So we have a bimodal distribution. So as a quick example, if n is 14, p is 0.4, you take those together and it's and it's uh, six. So since this is an integer, it's a bimodal distribution at five and six. Um, if n is 13 and p is 0.4, we get this product is 5.6. So the mode is at five. It's the floor of this number. So. Anyway, so that's all I have for today to, to find the mode of a binomial distribution. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.